Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. MMO Reporter's PAX 2012 coverage is brought to you by Guild Launch. Slay more dragons with Guild Launch. All right, so we are here at the uh, at the Tryon booth, End of Nations, with Mike Legg, president of Petroglyph. Uh, we're talking about End of Nations. Can you give us for for people who might not know anything about End of Nations? Can you give us, you know, the the quick pitch? What's the game about? End of Nations is an MMORTS. It's a, we, we're, we're 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 telling everybody it's the world's first huge budget, huge scale AAA MMORTS. Um, it's all free to play, so you can you can actually as you play through the game, there's no uh, pay to win at all. So uh, players can play the game, and as you play through the game and win battles, you earn money to buy more things. You have uh, the game takes place about 50 years in the future. Uh, you play the Liberation Front or the Shadow Revolution. Those are our two factions that are fighting against the Order of Nations, which is the current big totalitarian faction that's kind of taken over the planet 50 years into the future. And uh, they've stripped everybody of their civil rights. People are trying very hard to get their freedoms back, and that's where the two factions come in. Um, each faction, you have two commander classes that you can play at, at launch. So you have two, so there's a total of four different commander classes. Each commander class, um, you level up your commander through battle. So as you level up, you gain experience, you'll gain more experience, you'll level up, you'll be able to unlock new abilities. Each commander has their own unique tech tree that unlocks new vehicles, uh, new weapons, new structures, uh, new commander abilities. And um, as you do that, you'll unlock new units. You can, you, you'll be able to customize your army, take them into battle, and uh, and just basically, it's just it's an it's a massive scale MMORTS. The world runs 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week. Um, you can play cooperative PVE. So you can, if you do, if PVP is not your thing, you can just jump in and play co-op battles. Um, you can also, if you want to play PVP, and just you know, we have an ELO rating system, so you can jump in with other players and get yourself ranked on the leaderboards. And um, it's great. You can play one v one, two v two. 4v4, 8v8, and we go, because it's an MMORTS, we go all the way up to 28 versus 28. So it's got a massive scale and a ton of customizability. Well, that sounds exciting. Let, let's take a look. All right, let's do it. We're showing, we're showing here at PAX, we're showing End of Nations. It's a uh, free-to-play MMORTS, and uh, we're currently in closed beta with the game. We're gonna, uh, so right now we're in the middle of a map, we're battling a, uh, this, this map is called Deep Hammer, and uh, we're in the middle of a battle with um, 24, 23 other players. This is a 12 v 12 map. So in End of Nations, I'm gonna run around here and try and blow some things up while I'm talking to you guys. And uh, in End of Nations, you start off as a level one commander. There's four commander classes that you choose. And um, every one of your commanders uh, can level up. And as you level up, you'll unlock new uh, things in your tech tree. So each commander has their own tech tree. And uh, you'll unlock new units to take into battle. And um, you can actually individually customize your units as well with uh, custom mods that you get. If you want to like increase sight range, if you want to increase your attack power, um, you know, however you want to customize your army. So there's a lot of customizability in this game, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pull back here because we've got some tanks coming in after us and giving us some grief here. So just because somebody is a specific uh, commander doesn't mean that they're gonna have exactly the same playstyle as somebody else because they can modify their units to fit their yeah. specific playstyle. You can, you can modify both your commanders, uh, your commanders tech tree. I've got some pretty serious damage here, so uh, we're gonna try and do a little. Uh, do a little repairing here if I got any repair turrets. And uh, anyways, um, yeah. So what we're so what you can do is from your commander. So what, once you pick one of the four command, so there's two factions. Each faction has two commander classes. And once you pick your commander class, you know you can like yeah you can customize how that commander actually works in place. So that's really nice. It gives you customizability there. And then down to the individual unit level, you can you can do mods for your units. They'll give them speed boost, sight range you know, enhanced armor and things like that. So, um, at, so and as you play through battles, you'll level up, you'll uh, unlock, you'll unlock in-game money that you use to buy things, more copies of units and, um, and new things as you level. And, um, and then you can also, since the game's free to play, you can also buy customization items. So if you want to have some different skins that you might want to play with, you know, we've got a bacon skin, we've got different flag skins, leopard print. I can pull you guys back to the war room too and show you some of these other, some of these other skins that we have. So there's a lot of customizability too. 
Um, the other thing I really love about it too is that we've got a full range of different type of um, types of missions that you can play too. So if you're a PvP gamer, if you like to play head to head against other players like we're doing now, um, you can you can do that. We go all the way up to 28 versus 28. You know, you, we still have 1v1 and 2v2, 4v4, 8v8. But we go all the way up to 28 versus 28, so you can have some very big epic scale games. Now, if you're not a big PvP player and you like to play more cooperatively, we've also got a bunch of cooperative missions that you can play. So you can level up your commander without ever touching, you know, if you don't ever, ever want to play, you know, competitive PvP with other players, you don't have to. And the nice thing is, when you, when you actually, oh, what I'll do is, um, in a second here, I'm going to jump out of this map and I'll show you. But you can, you, you, by playing in PvP, you capture different regions around the world map. And when, you, when your faction holds that map, you actually get some bonuses while you're playing in that map. And um, yeah, so it's just, it's got, a, it's, everything's connected to, you know, it's all client server. Everything's connected to the servers. So you can, you know, get into the game anytime, 24 hours a day. And it's very easy to find other players to play with. You can do match, you know, we have a full matchmaking system so that you get grouped with other players at the same skill level. It uses like an ELO rating. So that helps as well. And, um, you know, it's just like, there's, there's just a lot of uh, variety and everything that you, know, that, that you can play. So a lot of different types of play styles that, that um, and like I said, if you, get, if, you, if you feel that you've done everything that you want to do with your one commander, you can, uh, oh, actually, I'm going to rebuild some of these guys here since I lost them. While you're talking about the UI, can you talk a little bit about the, the different sections of that bottom UI, both how you respawn the units and, oh, and the yeah. abilities and stuff? So when you're, when you're, before you come into battle, okay, so what we've got is, and, every, and this all depends on how your commander class, but right here, I've got a hero unit, and her name is Sidewinder, and she's in this helicopter right here. So she's, she's got some awesome aerial capabilities. So this is where your hero slot goes. So if you want to add a hero to come to you can. Now we also have here, you can switch in live in the game, we can change out our companies. So while I'm talking, what I'll do is I'll switch, let's see, we'll switch over to our Bravo company. And this is nice because you build out these different companies when you're at the war room. And when you come in the battle, you choose which your companies that you want to bring with you. So now we'll, we'll switch. We'll change to Bravo Company. So I'm going to change company right now. And what's going to happen is our guys, we're going to respawn our units back in the map. They'll be coming in in just a second. There's just a slight time delay. So we'll scroll down. We're going to scroll back down to our base. And uh, they should be coming in in just a second. You can actually see here where they're coming in. So we've got Blur. She's one of our heroes. She's very fast. She's in a, a powered infantry suit. Here's where all of our, our, our vehicles and our infantry go. So you could have right along in these sections here, based on this commander class, this is a, she's a phantom command, or you're, we're playing a phantom commander. So this is where you put all your aircraft, your unit, your, your, your strike vehicles, your tanks. And then over here is where you can build your tactical structure. You, you can bring in tactical structures. And then here's where you can put your cap, your commander super abilities. So you can have different things like, okay, we've got a repair subroutine on this that we can repair our units. So let me find my units real quick. I'm gonna because they just they just appeared in the map. So here we are. So now I've got a whole bunch of fast moving infantry. So you can get yourself set up with one company that's really anti-air, for example, exactly. and then anti-tank. Yeah, so you can change on the fly depending on the needs on the battlefield. So now we're gonna go get in some some battles going here. And this is really nice too because we can drop down, like, okay, we're gonna come up to this victory point right here. You can see on the map. There's different victory points to capture. Things captured in red are, are owned by the uh, are owned by our enemies, and things in blue are owned by us. You can see up here we have two victory points. We have two victory points. Our opponents have two victory points. So we're going to come up here, and we've got this spot captured. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down some structures here, including a missile turret. So now when enemies show up, we've got this thing a little bit more fortified. Uh-oh, in fact, here we go. So now we got, we got some resistance. They're coming in to try and capture this point. Looks like they're falling back now, which is good. Yeah, they're running off. They will be back, I'm sure. I'll put down a couple more support structures. Another cluster missile turret. And this will kind of help us. So this is what's nice, too, is from these slots down here, this is where you can put your tactical structures. Now, if you're playing a different commander class, you'll have a different loadout where you can actually do more tactical structures if you want or less vehicles. So in this particular one, 
these are our units, these are our structures, and these are our super abilities. And, you know, maybe we'll do a little repair here. Let's see, which one is it? The, uh, repair there it is. So now we do a little repair on this unit. You can repair a group of units or multiple units. Oh, now we're repairing everybody, so that's good. So now everybody's getting repaired. So that's nice, too. And the goal of the map is we want to capture all four victory points. And so I've got a bunch of other players. You can see the player list here. I'm in green right there. The guys in the guys in gold are my allies, and the guys in red are my are my uh, enemies. So this is a 24 battle, 24 player battle going right now live. And is this with the uh, with the beta servers or, or live we're, here? At, no, at no, we're on the we're on the uh, alpha beta, and the, say, this is like our alpha shard that we're connected okay. to now, which which we also do our, our closed beta events as well. So yeah, so we'll go back up here and get getting some more heat. Kind of get up here. We'll go get it. Get up here and get a little. Get a little scrap. Here's somebody. Oh yeah, these guys are great. Gonna fall back a little bit. Oh, they're running. Okay, good. So we're now we're now capturing a satellite relay. And then by doing this, this will increase our tactical resources. So as we have money coming in to build more things. We'll do that. So, yep, now we got it. So now we're going to go do a push with these guys. I'm just going to follow them. Safety in numbers. Here we go. Yeah, now we're going to capture this point. This is good. Got the enemy starting to fall back. He's retreating. And we got the nuke relay now. So now we got to capture the nuke super weapon. So we're doing a good push here. We got a bunch of other players working with us. So the Bravo company is working out a little bit better for me. Oh, I'm going to fall back. Better do a little. Oh, I just lost some units. I'm calling in reinforcements on those right now. My repair subroutine is still counting down. Oh, we're taking some good hits here. We'll fall back a little bit. So for a map this size, what what, what do you, uh, on your end, figure is a good amount of time for a map like this to run for a game? Well, at a 12v12, this map could go like, we've seen it go up to like 45 minutes. This Actually, this map can sometimes change hands. It can go back and forth quite a lot if both teams are really, really good. You know, and so I've seen this one go 45 minutes to an hour, maybe even sometimes a little longer if everybody really, really knows what they're doing. Um, but we've got... We've got other stuff too, like you know. So we've got you know we've got one v one maps, two v two maps that you know tend to, tend to go a little bit faster. But it just depends on the skill set of the players, and you know some of these games can really be long drawn out battles, you know, because these guys because if everybody knows exactly what they're doing, what's pretty amazing is like when we're playing in our twenty eight versus twenty eight, you'll see um, a lot of times if there's a group of people that team up, like say like like gets five to ten people that really know what they're doing, that really makes the difference for. Um, for, you know, because it, it, uh, it tends to be a lot of chaos in that map because a lot of people are playing kind of individually. Yeah. So everybody's kind of running around doing their own thing. So if you can get a group of like five to 10 people that you're all working cooperatively with, oh man, you can wreak some serious havoc. Especially because you give your, if your friends that you're playing with, you're all coordinated and uh, oh boy, here comes this aircraft. He's giving me a pretty good beating here. Lost a lot of my units. Up, oh, got some other aircraft coming in, that's good. Still shooting at me though. Come on, guys. Calling in reinforcements of the units that were lost. They'll come back in at the landing zone that I was at. Oh yeah, he's giving me, he's working me pretty good. So yeah, so what so it's it's nice because there is a whole variety, you know, that you can play. Like I said, I love, I love playing co-op. I'm about to lose my hero. I love playing cooperatively. You know, a lot of people really love PvP. And uh, 
all these guys back there. Might be a good time to, can you show us the world map and the, and all that stuff, the, yeah, the let me setting up your gearing, your... And the your nice map. thing about this is I'm bailing out, so my guys are waiting, so I'm bailing out on the battle. But what's nice is somebody can actually elect to come in and join and take my spot. So, so I've retreated back out, now I'm back in the war room. And uh, what I'll do is go over to our armory. And um, so yeah, so here is, Here's Blur. You know she's all de she's all decked out. This is her, this is her her unit here. This is in her power armor. So she's our hero in in the Bravo company. And what we can do is like I'll switch to like one of our other companies. So let me go look at Alpha Company. And what we can do here is so we have mod slots on every one of our units. So this so Alpha Bravo and Charlie companies. These are three different companies that we've customized out. And you can get more slots and have more companies as well that you can take in the battle. We've got these mod slots here, so you can take mods, which are here, and we can say, oh, we'll take the custom chassis and we'll drop it in over here. So now we've got an improved chassis, which like increases the unit health by 800. So we'll, we'll gain these through drops in the game too, so we can get some ammo improvements here, so we can drop that one into here. And so as you, unlock the, as you unlock mods in the game, you can actually buy more with in-game money or you can purchase from the store. So we can actually go and say, go to custom armament, and let's see if this will work. So I bring up the store. This is going to our web server. Mm -hmm. So this has a little bit of a delay on it, but it is coming up. This is running really slow because we're connected up into Dallas for this one. And we'll buy this with wealth. And we'll confirm. And so that was just purchased from the web store. So now we have more of those that we can add in and customize more of our units. Okay. So, and then the other fun thing is you can also go and customize with paint jobs as well. So let's see, what have we unlocked here? Actually, this system, we haven't unlocked any. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to actually go buy the leopard skin. Because really, a leopard skin armored uh, yeah. vehicle is what you need. And, well, that will. I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll confuse the enemy. They'll be like, who would choose that? Turn the tide of the battle, right? Exactly. Well, you know, I got to tell you, there have been times where, like, I've been playing against, like, pink kitty tanks, and, you know, when they're destroying me, I'm so humiliated that, you know, I just kind of I just kind of flee, you know? So, so yeah, here you go. So, like, oh, yeah, now we got the leopard print going. Well, we've got, you know, we've got the bacon skin that they're, I think they're actually giving away as a promotion. I think you can, you can sign up for the beta and get a, a bacon skin. Um, I was going to say, also, I really like, I like digital camo. Let me go buy that really quick. So using some of my wealth that I've acquired, I'm going to buy, buy digital camo. And you can buy this with real money, too. So if you don't want to use your valuable in-game credits that you've earned. Let's see. So digital camo. Once you know, it's, it's almost like there's 70,000 geeks in one location trying to access the internet all at once. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> We've been, you know, I gotta say though, so far we've been holding up pretty good. Oh, here it comes, okay. Oh, I've got it now. It just took a minute to come in from the store. So now I actually own digital camo. So th this looks pretty neat on my units as well. Let me see, there we go. So I like, and it applies to all of your units too. So everything in your army, you can see now has like the digital camo skin. We can go over to the Bravo company or go over to the Charlie company and we can take these guys. And because I bought, I bought the skins, now I can apply them, I can put digital camo on him too. So that allows us to customize those guys. We can put mods into our mod slots to customize every unit. And then the research lab is where we customize our commanders. So as a Phantom Commander, these are where we've applied all of our points. You can see we applied some points to our commander abilities right along here, like you saw the repair ability I was trying to use. Tactical structures and units. And you can always clear the tree and then re and reassign. And when you hit level 20, you also have class specialization. So you have one big kind of superpower that you can apply to your class when you hit level 20. So it's got just tons of great customizability options to let player like really kind of customize their experience. As well as, you know, if they want to play all PvP, PvE, or a combination of both. So you also talked about, about maps changing hands. Does that work on sort of a meta level on the world scale? Yes, correct. So we, we've got it disabled for uh, for packs, but when we're playing like in our beta events and everything, we had, we had so you can see right now the score is Liberation Front, zero, and uh, or, uh, Shadow Revolution is zero. In our last closed beta event, 
we had we had 15,000 victories for the Shadow Revolution and 11,000 victories for the Liberation Front. I mean, for Shadow Revolution, I'm sorry, for the Liberation Front had more victories. So that's, over that weekend, there were that many battles played, and when you control a territory, you get some enhan you know, some very slight buffs. They give you slight advantages, and you and you get more money too. So if you're if you're controlling and holding a territory, that is really good. And if you help flip the territory, that also plays really well into your into your uh, into your favor. Awesome. So yeah, so so the goal is always like yeah, keep fighting for your faction. And if you see a faction that got taken by the enemy, everyone rally and go try and grab that back. Cool. Well, that was awesome. I really like look. I like the persistence of the open world. I like the commanders. I like all of that. It really looks like it's going to be an inter interesting game. Now, when you get home after a long day at the office and you log into End of Nations, what what type of commander do you play? Well, I like I like playing the uh, I like playing Liberation Front. You know, I, I there. It's kind of I, I'm not a very uh, personally I'm not a great finesse style you know RTS player. You know, so um, Shadow Revolution is definitely more of like kind of like more of a for an expert player. So I like Liberation Front. It's more kind of tr you know like kind of you know more a little bit more simple. You know, and easier to grasp with the unit stuff. And what I really love doing, I love our um, our our elite our elite companies that we have. We've got some really neat elite companies in the game that are like these pre-built like pre they're already preset they have a hero they've already they're already set up with a fixed set of units already in them there's one called Liberty Brigade and in traditional RTS I'm a turtler I love I love sitting back yeah. building up massive defenses and just you know like defending yeah. I'm not a great aggressive player going in into the fray and with Liberty Brigade there's this one unit called the Moose, and you just you lock it in, you you entrench it, and you send out these little units called White Mice that are stealth, and they'll sneak out around the battlefield, and they'll be spotters for this massive scale artillery. And I love to just park. I put down a bunch of turrets around me, and like, and then I'll entrench. So like, you get like all these walls that go up around your unit, and then you actually, and then it's just fun to like sneak out those little White Mice, get them out there, get them positioned. And then yeah, and then just just start raining hell down on the enemy from far away, and just watching the panic that ensues. Of course, that if they find my white mice, then I got a problem. But they're they're really cheap to respawn, and they're fast to get them back out there. So, yeah, I like to kind of just stay back and hold the fort. So that's what I like to do. I like the turtle. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. Looking forward to the game, and uh, and can't wait to ha to have it come out. Thanks so much. I'm delighted to be here at PAX. This is awesome.